am to be back again at Fort Bragg. Been here many times. Uh, so much that Fort Bragg does for our country. Uh, so many missions essential to our security that are accomplished here at Fort Bragg. And so I, I've been thanking the troops here, but I also want to thank the community for their support of this essential installation. Uh, I was just speaking to troopers from the 18th Airborne Corps, one of the elements headquartered here at Bragg, um, which I'm now asking, or we are asking to do two big jobs at the same time. First, to continue to be uh, our emergency response force, our global response force, uh, because we're a global country with global responsibilities, but also today their headquarters will take command of the important campaign to defeat and destroy ISIL in Iraq and Syria. Uh, I have tremendous confidence in the command team that will take over the war there, uh, led by Lieutenant General Steve Townsend. I've known him for a long time, uh, have complete confidence in his exceptional abilities. And uh, he's got a great staff that's going with him. They know the area very well. Uh, they're very well acquainted with and briefed on the steps we've taken in the campaign so far. And I'm confident they'll bring us closer to what I'm confident will occur, uh, which is the def lasting defeat of ISIL. Uh, I'll also meet with today with our Joint Special Operations Command, another critical national element located here at Fort Bragg. And while I can't tell you much about what we t we'll be uh, discussing there, I can just say that uh, they, like the element, other elements here at, at Bragg, are essential to our security. We count on them every single day in ways that not everyone uh, can see, but everyone can feel in the protection it affords to them around the world. Uh, I uh, 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 once again thank everyone, the folks here who have hosted me while I've been here, uh, but above all the community for supporting this tremendous installation. So with that, let me go. And Peter, are you? What are the generals telling you, and what are you thinking that we need to do in order to defeat ISIL? Uh, and do at any point do you see that we will leave the role of training the Iraqi forces and send a combat units in to actually get the job done? Well, I mean, first of all, we talk about that every day of every week, and I'm sure I'll be talking to General Townsend very frequently, just like I speak to General McFarland today, Chairman Dunford and I do, General Votel, who's our CENTCOM commander, and of course we talk to the President all the time uh, about this. And the general answer to your question is, are we, go, are we prepared to do more to accelerate the campaign to defeat ISIL? The answer to that is yes. And I think you've seen that over the last five months. Just a couple of weeks ago in Baghdad, I announced an additional contingent of U.S. forces. Now, with respect to what they're doing there, I'll just remind you that our overall strategic approach in Iraq and Syria is to uh, enable victory by capable, motivated local forces and not try to substitute for them because they need to make the victory stick after the victory is won, and only local forces can do that. We can help them, and we are helping them, but our overall strategic approach is that. That said, that is very difficult duty. It's duty that only America and its coalition partners have the power and the acumen to accomplish, and it should be clear that it puts our folks in harm's way. There's no doubt about it, and there's no more important responsibility for me as Secretary of Defense than to put our people in harm's way. Uh, we do that advisedly. Their force protection is a very important aspect of things to us, but, but nobody should be any, in any doubt uh, that forces that are participating in this campaign are uh, at risk, despite the strategic approach that I said is, is to enable uh, local uh, forces. John? Secretary, you just spoke about your concerns about the stabilization and reconstruction efforts mm -hmm. that would follow on to any defeat of ISIL in Mosul or Raqqa. 
and you uh, talked about the need for the international community to be involved in that. Um, but do you see a role for U.S. civilian contractors to take part in those efforts, much as they've done in the past in Iraq and in Afghanistan? Uh, I do think that um, much of the reconstruction effort will be done by under civil authorities, that is not Department of Defense, but uh, other parts of the U.S. government, but very importantly, the international community and the United Nations. Uh, much of their activity is done through contractors. Some of those are Americans, who have a lot of experience, by the way, after 15 years of, of uh, heavy involvement in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, uh, and uh, uh, the region. That's going to be a big job. That's not a principally American job. We will play a role in it. Uh, but remember that the two, more than $2 billion that we, uh, uh, in pledges that we got last week, will mostly be executed through civilian agencies, and frequently they'll use contractors uh, to do that. So absolutely. Sydney? Uh, sir, one of the things that struck me about this visit, and a lot of what we've been generally, is that there's almost a schizoid nature. I mean, this very core, we had paratroopers going into Poland for a NATO exercise, uh, and we have the core HQ going into the Mideast for a coin kind of CT uh, evolution. Uh, you yourself spend you know, a big chunk of your time uh, waging war on ISIS, and a big chunk with things like third offset, strategic capabilities mm -hmm. office, yeah. to Asia, they're all very great power focus. Is there any way to cross-pollinate these, to leverage you know, these very experienced officers with all these years of post 9 11 experience for perhaps the gray or hybrid threats we see from big powers? Is there any way to leverage from this technology, like you know, even the F 35, which General Carlisle said might go to the Middle East, for uh, the so called low end fight? Well, you're, you're, first of all, you're right. We're busy uh, because we've, we have the counter ISIL campaign uh, to win, which we will do. Uh, but in Europe, which you mentioned, uh, we are standing with our NATO allies against aggression, both tr traditional sort of aggression and then the what you called hybrid warfare, which is the little green men phenomenon that you saw in Ukraine. Uh, we're standing for principle and continued security in the Asia Pacific, which is where half of humanity lives and half of the economic activity of the world is. Uh, we stand tall every single day on the Korean Peninsula. People forget that. North Korea, the DMZ, um, with respect to Iran and Iran's malign influence in the Gulf. So we have lots of things that we have to do and pay attention to. And we have today and we have tomorrow. So I need to be uh, making sure that we're successful and that I support our folks in what they have to do today. But we also have to think 10, 20 years ago and make sure that we remain the finest fighting force the world has ever known. That means having the best technology and the best people to, for tomorrow. So the answer is we got to do the whole world and we got to do today and tomorrow. But the, the people you saw here in this room, they're capable of all that. When I talk about the global response force, which Steve Townsend has been uh, and remains, uh, responsible for. That really is a global response force. And he uses the same forces. We do have forces that are, that are very um, uh, flexible in their capabilities and the training of the people who are in this room is really quite broad. They're trained from high spectrum, high end of the combat spectrum, right down to um, what's called the lower end, but which is still uh, dangerous, counterterrorism, counterinsurgency, uh, and so forth. And then finally, uh, it's a long answer, but it was a big question, uh, they're also very good at enabling other militaries, and that's going to be one of their principal functions, training, advising, insist, assisting, and giving the high-end stuff to forces that don't have it and need it like Iraqi forces that are approaching Mosul. Is that a question over here, sir? There, um, we all know now that the threat of ISIS has extended outside of the Middle East, and I think the third point on your campaign was talking about supporting law enforcement, strengthening homeland security. Can you expand on that a little bit and talk sure. to me about what that looks like? 
Yeah, uh, ab absolutely can. Obviously, the, the lead for protecting American people within the United States is law enforcement, state, local, and federal, and the Department of Homeland Security and our intelligence community, but we do support them as the Department of Defense. Um, uh, we support them in, for example, the air defense of the country. We support them in deploying troops to major events that could be targets for terrorist activity. Uh, we support them if and when uh, uh, something catastrophic happens, a natural disaster or, hypothetically, a major attack on the United States. So we're, we're, there, there are lots of different ways that we support them. Uh, so we're not in the lead there as we are in a, in a, in a, 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 a theater of war uh, in that way. But it's very much on our mind. And uh, uh, General Lori Robinson, who's the commander of our Northern Command, she does this every day, pays attention to the defense of North America. That's her mission. In the same way that General Votel's cent command, Central Command is for the, the Middle East. Laurie's got North America, she's got us, she's extremely capable, and that's what she does every day. We have time for two more, sir. Dan? Yes, sir. Are there specific um, accelerant capabilities that you expect uh, General Townsend and his troops to bring to the fight when they deploy? I, I think the whole suite. They are cross-trained in everything. Uh, so Steve will have the air war, the cyber war, the space war, the ground war, the um, uh, training, logistics, equipment, um, force protection, the whole deal. And, and one of the important things that we did in establishing the command uh, that General Townsend will fill is precisely that, put everything underneath that commander. So whatever he needs, he'll get. Whatever's over there, he's in charge of. And in today's campaign against an enemy like ISIL, it runs the whole spectrum all the way from, you know, air power to cyber. Yeah. Uh, sir, last week during the counter-ISIL meetings, uh, there was a lot of discussion about building up the Iraqi troops specifically for retaking Mosul. If I recall correctly, that includes building up six brigades for that operation. Where are we in the process of building up those troops? Uh, can you give us any kind of update sure. as to where, uh, uh, how the coalition is building? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can. Let me give you the outlines, and then I, I def, I'd send you over to General McFarland and ultimately General Townsend for the, for the details. But it is exactly as you say. There are Iraqi army brigades um, trained and equipped, and most of them have been done that, have gone through their training already, but not all of them, by the United States and our coalition partners, mostly in southern Iraq. They're in the process of relocating to northern Iraq, that's where the Mahmoor and Kiara West and those locations that you hear about uh, come in. They're the staging areas and the southern approaches to Mosul uh, that they will uh, use for the southernmost envelopment. You didn't mention but might have, and I'm sure you know, that in addition there are Peshmerga brigades from the north um, if organized, trained by the coalition in agreement between Prime Minister Abadi and President Barzani that will make the northernmost part of this pincer movement uh, on Mosul. So <clears throat> the training and equipping of all of those forces, all of that is going on schedule. <clears throat> the positioning of them will go on schedule. And uh, uh, that will lead to the uh, envelopment of Mosul and ultimately to the collapse of ISIL's control over Mosul, but you've got exactly what those are the, the, the parts. And of course that's been underway for quite some time. Sir, got to keep you on schedule. Oh, I sorry, I want to mention one other thing and also of course the uh, Iraqi uh, 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 special forces which have been, they, they also we train, equip, enable, assist, advise them. Uh, and then also uh, with the Iraqi government, uh, local police forces 
which are important because I was emphasizing the need for the Iraqis to be able to hold territory, keep the peace, and keep ISIL out once we've beaten them and thrown them out. And that only they can do. And so training local police forces is a critical part of the overall mission. Thank you. Thanks all. Thanks, Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. You're an old friend of Peter's, is that what I understand? That's true. I'll hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. There's